Hey guys, today we are going to talk about whatever happened to the Magic the Gathering movie that was talked about four years ago, January 13th, 2014. Fox was going to bring Magic the Gathering to the big screen. Now, Wizard of the Coast has had Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragon movies before. I've actually watched one of them, and it was, it's not great. But I could see, I mean, it's a lot better than what's on Amazon Prime. Like, these scary horror movies on Amazon Prime are very bad. So I could see going on Netflix or Amazon Prime or something like that. But essentially, they use this to hype up stuff, like the toy line. Remember the Funko toy line where we had the Funko figures and the Funko Legacy line, which was the more expensive action figure, if you would. And nothing happened. Then we had a board game, and another board game, and another board game. And that wasn't great either. So any non-Magic card related item has pretty much tanked heavily. Uh, this includes merchandise such as t-shirts. I remember they were selling uh, t-shirts of Chandra and Lily. And they were not the best looking. I, I'm just like, mm, no, not for me. They also had in Japan a manga, and a it was interesting. I would love to see a manga or anime here, but today we're going to talk about why I have very little faith in Magic the Gathering movie. A, it's been a very long time. B, there's been no updates. And C, Magic Wizard of the Coast has had a record for promoting something and not delivering it. The last time I remember was the Magic the Gathering MMO. And this was supposed to be really awesome. And nope, haven't heard a single whisper about that. They had all these people in place. And just like the movie, the movie had directors. And they were going to launch a massive franchise on the scale of Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. Uh, the studio enlisted Simon Kinberg, the Fox-based writer, producer, who is making the X-Men and the Fantastic Four universes engineer blah 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 anyway my point is they give up on stuff before even like they never put their whole effort in it i own a startup company and i'll tell you a little bit more about that later in a later video because we're doing a buyout right now which means i have not been paid in <laughs> multiple months but it's okay because i get paid in quote equity right so what, what's happening here is you don't have people who are passionate. You have people working at Wizard of the Coast that I feel are not great workers and they're not passionate about it. They don't finish a product. There's so many different products I can name. Magic Online, the even the set. Remember we had the old sets and we cut all out core set and Magic Origin was supposed to be the last big bang of core set. And that's where Rudy said that Magic Origin was a great investment because Theoretically, if it was the last core set, it might have been a good investment, but now it's not. We're getting a core set this year. So they always say stuff, and then they said that, oh, modern, we're not going to support modern, we're going to put standard. Then that didn't happen, now we're back to modern again. We have more modern GPs and events. We even have legacy GPs and events. So they, whatever, they flip-flop, and that's a big problem. I would have respected them a lot more if the, the rotation, that they had changed rotation. They cut the core set, rotation was going to be faster, people were upset, and even before they could supplement the faster rotation, they ended up going with an even slower rotation. We had multiple blocks that shouldn't have existed with each other, existing with each other, and they didn't even give it a chance. Maybe the faster rotation after trial actually made sense it could make sense it could be like hey standard's going to be really cheap don't expect it to be we're going to discount the boxes for the distributors and the stores that will help people buy cards cheaper and then we can have a set we can have a format where people can play and not not spend 500 dollars for a deck that could have been the format, that could have been the concept, but who knows, it was never, it was abandoned midway. And now we have the standard that we have with all the bannings, because these cards 
should not have existed with each other. Now, going on to the Magic movie, uh, the Magic movie is quite interesting because they have, I believe, the purpose of hyping this fake movie, and I do believe it's a fake movie, was to sell the toy line, and had the toy line done very well, we would actually get a movie. It's a chicken or egg, but given that the fact that Hasbro is a toy company, they wanted to see how well the Funko figures could sell, what their audience was like, the Funko legacy figures, the board games, how much non-magic, non-magic card related merchandise would people buy? The answer was almost zero. As you can see, these things going on discount at the dollar store or the five and below, you can get the board games right now. So let's talk about the Magic MMO and it follows a similar pattern. You have Cryptic Studios, you have these studio names, you're dropping names left and right and yet there's no update. It's been almost actually over six months and all we know is Magic Arena is gonna suck all your money. I play gotcha games and I know what Magic Arena is. You don't need, I don't need a beta key to know what it is. It's going to be addicting for some people. It's going to target people who have addicted quote whale personalities with large bank accounts and maybe people don't even have bank accounts and it's going to punish them for not being able to control their addictions. I play F Fate Grand Order, I play Fire Emblem and I used to drop a few hundred dollars every banner, which I mean, they sometimes have two free banners a month. I'm not going to do that for Magic Arena because I don't, I feel like it's set up for you to spend a ton of money and not get very much from it. So the reason that the Magic movie is not going back on track, the reason the Magic movie has a 0% or 0 point, I guess I'll give it a 1% because it every, every anything's possible is because they don't commit there's no commitment there's not passionate people uh, there's not a do or die team who's like oh we need to launch this movie we need to get this going and you might be like oh well they gave it to fox it's up to fox to determine true but there's stuff that you can do to help fox like stranger like on netflix they really promote their netflix uh, originals like on commercials, right? So you could have, instead of trying to make money selling really bad toys that are so overly expensive, they could have put like clips, uh, movie clips and spent some money. Wizard of Coast has this big problem I see in marketing is they just rely on fandom and they don't rely on paying people to promote their products, which in the long run is going to fail them because Hearthstone, you know, Hearthstone is always, you know, promoting, promotes in this, promotes in that. They take very good care of their streamers. Uh, one of the reasons Brian Kibler decided, uh, Brian Kibler at one time, he was called the handsomest man in magic. And he was also probably the most liked um, magic player. I would say at least top two. And he gave it all up. He gave his booth speaking. He gave his streaming. He gave all that up for Hearthstone, which is a direct competitor. And then you might ask why. It's because they take care of him. Hearthstone gives him a lot more money than Magic Online could ever give him. That brings me to why I think MTG Arena is going to fail. If you play Magic Duels, you will understand I put money in that game because it was on my iPad and wh why not? I was supporting the developers. And then out of the blue, during Hour of Devastation, the week before it was going to be released, they said online that, hey, we're not going to release Hour of Devastation. They knew that way ahead of time, but they only said that later, almost, almost at the pre-release. So people would still buy coins, people would still play the game. And that's very deceptive. That's something that honestly is very poor in marketing because that makes me not trust them a iota. They knew, development team knew even before Amr Ket that, hey, this product is not going to release. This update is not going to release because we don't have the team and we're not spending time on it. We are 
getting rid of it. Yet they waited and waited and waited, and during that waiting period, people could still play the game that they didn't know was dead already. People could have purchased coins, which they didn't know the game was going to die. And that's very that's kind of the where I see Wizards of the Coast. They want to drain as much money as possible from its player base with giving them the least, the least possible. And I I just look at. I looked at, at the YouTube content creators and I compared them to the ones in Hearthstone. Hearthstone, I was watching this guy, he's called Disguised Toast. And he's living in a gaming house and he has, I can't imagine a Magic the Gathering player, streamer making as much as Brian Kibler or Disguised Toast. And they aren't even the biggest names in Hearthstone. There's way bigger. So you can make a livelihood in Hearthstone. Um, maybe there's... 50 to 100 people who can do that on YouTube. It's literally just Tolarian and the Manosaurus. I think that's it. Anyway, bye guys.